Small businesses have been empowered by the appearance of new generative AI tools such as ChatGPT. In this video, I will show you how we are using these technologies to improve our internal processes and even embracing new initiatives. Hi there, I'm Colin Fernandez, your AI advisor, and welcome to another AI shot. So you know, there is this major hype nowadays about generative AI tools such as ChatGPT, OpenAI, GPT-4, DALI, Midjourney, Jasper. I mean, there's a massive spread of AI tools and people is, are even, you know, joking about this, like everybody's talking about AI, like now we have all of these new AI gurus nowadays and people are joking about it. But actually, you know, I've been working in this field for over a decade and I think this is transformational. Not necessarily because of the tech difference between the tools that we had a few years, a couple of years ago versus the technologies that we have now, because the fundamental part of these technologies haven't changed, it's just training with more data but because it's actually lowering the entry barrier for companies to adopting AI. And I think this is the major change that these tools brought us uh, nowadays. Actually, in the description, you will have a bonus content, 10 ideas that you, as a small business owner, can use, uh, you know, these kind of AI, generative AI tools to improve your business, okay? And, you know, as I said, I'm working, I have been working on AI for over a decade. Neil AI is almost five years old now. And people always ask me, you know, like, if you are selling this idea that AI can change, transform a business, and that AI is the tool to improve any business in a constant, in an ever-improving manner, how are you using AI internally at Neil AI? And, you know, it may sound kind of hypocrite, but I have never used AI to internally improve our processes. And I think this is the right way to approach it, right? Because I'm not selling that everybody should use AI. I'm selling a way of using AI in a safe manner that can actually bring value in the long term. And at Neil AI, we didn't have the scale, both in terms of amount of historical data, because we were quite recent, but also because of the, the kind of margins that we have because of the limited size of uh, our consulting base. Okay, so it wasn't the right tool for us to monetize AI internally. Of course, we built like incredible products for our clients where they can, you know, when they are monetizing AI, themselves internally and we are actually building joint partnerships with our clients but they, those are products that live apart that live beyond our company internally we were not optimizing we were not using ai to optimize it. And if you want to you know get ideas on how to monetize ai i have a video i will leave and uh, the link on how can you monetize ai so these kind of technologies you know generative ai tools such as ChatGPT, i will talk mainly about ChatGPT today change this reality so up to a few weeks ago we didn't use AI to optimize any of our internal processes. Nowadays, today, we are optimizing several of them using these kind of technologies, even on areas where we don't have any data, okay? So even on new initiatives that we didn't consider before. And I will give you an example now. So a lot of what we do with this video is actually content marketing, right? So I'm producing content that works as marketing for our company, because as you watch this video, you say, you know, this guy, has worked on this project that is very similar to my project. This guy has the right, the right mindset and thinks about all the angles when you are tackling an AI project. So maybe let me ask him about this project that I'm tackling uh, at this point. So of course, I love making these videos because it forced me to think about these problems, but of course it's a marketing strategy, right? And you know, because of our size, I didn't have time to tackle all kind of content and all kind of uh, social, media in the way I would like to, okay? But with ChatGPT, we kind of created, for example, our Twitter account. It was that before this, because I didn't have the time to think about, you know, the kind of content that I should put on Twitter. I didn't have time to think of novel ideas only for Twitter, but I'm producing a lot of content here, right? Every week I'm producing videos. So what we are doing is even without any code, okay? So we are creating the captions from this video, the automated captions, which of course, are generated with an AI tool. In this case, we are using CapCut and AWS uh, Transcribe. So we generate these captions, and then I just ask ChatGPT. I have an automation on Zapier that I, that asks ChatGPT. You know, I have this transcription from this video. Write 10 tweets um, summarizing the main highlights of this video. Okay, these ideas uh, then go to a table where I can just approve them, reject them, or edit them and improve them, and they get tweeted automatically. In, in a certain schedule, all without any code. So you can do it yourself at home, even if you don't, if you're not a programmer, you can create a Twitter channel to repurpose your current content. 
okay? And basically Twitter was not reachable a couple of months ago for us. Now it's something that we are tweeting every other day. And I could actually tweet every day if I wanted multiple times. I also don't want to spam you. But ChatGPT and these generative AI tools trend uh, allow us to embrace this other platform without increasing you know, our effort our, uh, by much. I just have to approve or reject uh, ideas. And I'm actually now doing the same for blog posts. So I didn't have the time to create this video content every week and at the same time write blog posts every week. But I, I'm just asking ChatGPT, you know, I have this transcription from this video. Can you just write a blog post about it? And then I, I, I don't have like a full automation, but I have a very good starting point, right? Where I can, you know, just put more ideas, summarize, remove whatever ChatGPT uh, hallucinated and, you know, deviated from the actual content. So now I can optimize by a lot the way I approach these initiatives. I can embrace new initiatives just by using ChatGPT even without any prior data. As I said, Twitter was something that we didn't use before and we don't have that much text content to generate, right? So it's just a simple one hour automation you can do on Zapier and you have it, okay? That's it. And actually we are taking out two other projects. These are ongoing projects. I will tell you uh, in a few weeks how, how they are running. One of them is whenever we receive a request for a proposal, so we have a, a feed where we take all of these requests for proposals with the description of the kind of project that the leads are asking us. I'm just taking those, um, that description and looking for all our videos, all our blog posts, and all the descriptions of the projects that we have worked on in the past. I basically take the most similar ones and then I just put that in the new proposal as a warm start for the person that is actually writing the proposal for this client, you know, saying, you know, this client here is asking about these kind of problems. We talk about that in this point. So you should either, you know, watch the videos or mention them as references. And same thing for prior experience on these kind of problems, right? So this client is asking about a recommender system. These are the recommender systems that we built in the past on these industries. These were the results. So it's a major acceleration on the process of writing a proposal. And then we are doing the same thing for onboarding. So whenever we have a new project and we assign them to a consultant, we say, you know, these are the videos you should watch to take this project in the most efficient manner. These are the persons that work on these three, four similar projects that are quite similar to the project that you are taking now at Neo AI. So you should talk to them to understand what were the main learning outcomes they got from those projects. Okay, so we are accelerating our content generation on social media. We are improving the way we answer our proposals, our requests for proposals that we get, and we are accelerating the onboarding of consultants to new, to new projects using only ChatGPT and almost no code. So if you like this video so far, remember to like and subscribe, and I will give you, you know, homework for you to do. If you are a business owner, if you are a product owner, if you are a project manager in your company, I will ask you to look at your current processes, okay? All of your current processes, and take those that at some point of the process require some form of text interaction, okay? Some form of textual communication and consider if you could fully automate or at least create a draft for that content that will accelerate the process with very low risk, okay? So even if the process fails, it's nothing severe. So if, if it is zero risk, of course, you can fully automate it. If it is low risk, can you accelerate your internal team using these kind of technologies. Once you do that and identify the kind of activities you could optimize, try a few prompts on ChatGPT and ask it to generate this kind of content uh, so you can know, you know how far it will be to being a reality, okay? And then you can talk to us, of course, to implement it if you need. And once you do this, look at other initiatives you haven't taken so far because you didn't have the capacity just like I did with, with our Twitter account. Okay, so I didn't have the capacity to, for Twitter, but now, you know, with a few minutes per week, I have the capacity uh, to do it. So consider all of those ideas that you thought, you know, this will be nice, but I don't have the time for this. And ask yourself is if using the, the content, the text that you are generating already internally at your company, emails, Slack messages, Microsoft Teams messages, blog posts, if you could actually embrace those new initiatives. And tell me in the comments what were your conclusions, okay? I hope you like this video. Remember to like and subscribe. See you soon. Bye-bye.